In a fascinating turn of events, considering how bizarrely Xbox's closing generation played out, going into the ninth cycle of consoles, Sony and Microsoft are playing very different games. Now, before we go any further, yes, we will be doing the opposite of this video to focus on all the advantages the PS5 has over the Xbox Series X in the coming days. But honestly, right now, well, we struggle to get a Series X pre-launch and it's high time Xbox got some love. Because like it or not, Microsoft aren't bothered about competing in the console space in the same way anymore and the results are fascinating to pick apart. When Nintendo and Sony put stock in exclusives and platform-specific content for third parties, Microsoft are all in on what's best for gaming overall. Subscription models, monthly installment plans to afford the systems themselves, auto enhancements for multiple past generations of titles. It means zero platform exclusives at launch, no next-gen exclusives until at least 2022, and a business plan built around turning Xbox into a service playable anywhere rather than just another console. Honestly, it blows the whole competition angle wide open. And though 80% of pre-orders overall tended to side with Sony, Microsoft are playing the long game with some incredibly calculated moves. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and this is everything the Xbox Series X and S do better than the PS5. Number 8. Effortless backwards compatibility across multiple generations. Easy access, no frills backwards compatibility is something the industry initially discarded at the turn of the 8th generation, only for Microsoft to make it a key pillar of their appeal. Going back a few years now, Xbox enabled various original Xbox and Xbox 360 titles to run on Xbox One through prior hardware emulation, with the One X also gaining access to Xbox One X enhanced features. The latter meant that a title's developer had reapproached the design in some form, improving resolution, adding background slash texture detail, or otherwise improving what you already own. Series X carries forward this additional work with all updates applied automatically through smart delivery. The Series S also plays scores of Xbox and 360 titles from day one, but without their One X upgrades. All round though, it's a seamless process of carrying on where you left off, now playing the best versions of your favorite titles. Xbox want you to enjoy a legacy collection better than ever, across almost 20 years worth of releases. Number 7. Adding 4K and HDR to your entire Xbox collection where the One X's game enhancements were tied to individual titles being worked on by individual developers, Microsoft's secret source with series consoles comes from the hardware itself automatically adding better resolutions and HDR to games that never had it in the first place. Providing you have an HDR-capable TV, it means even much older titles like Geometry Wars, the original Fable, Fallout 3, etc. now have startling contrast and color depth looking best on Xbox. Resolution-wise, the Series X runs these older titles in 4K, whereas the Series S pushes some of them up to 1440p. Considering original Xbox games were languishing down in 480p resolution, that's a humongous leap for legendary titles like SSX3, the original Splinter Cell trilogy, or various LucasArts Star Wars games. A wider business angle on Microsoft's part is recognizing the value of third-party releases. Here, they've put a ton of money into enhancing our past collections alongside whatever we purchase going forward. Number 6. Game Pass the shiny jewel in Phil Spencer's crown, in just under three years, Game Pass has quickly become the Netflix for games that many thought would only be a pipe dream. Originally launched alongside Sea of Thieves, the Game Pass of today is bolstered by acquisitions from Bethesda and even EA, with the likes of Rockstar adding GTA 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 for a few months. Price-wise, Game Pass's value for money is off the charts. You've got a library including everything from Doom Eternal to The Witcher 3. Any new Xbox title is playable day one, and scores of indies will fly the flag for innovation and future building. Game Pass is hands down the best reason to go with Xbox, and though you can argue its charms are just as worthwhile on existing hardware, taken alongside my previous points and what I'll detail going forward, Microsoft are hoping you'll value an overall investment in gaming as a medium. Number 5. xCloud Streaming Simply because game streaming isn't anywhere near as mainstream as various tech companies would like, Microsoft's launch of xCloud kinda went completely unnoticed. Brilliantly though, if you're already subscribed to Game Pass Ultimate, the combination of Xbox Live Gold and regular Game Pass, xCloud is included for free. This means you just download the Game Pass app to your Android phone or other supported device, attach a controller, and you're good to go. Cross saves are supported and there's no installation required. You just tap on a game from your library that you want to play and everything is synced through Xbox's cloud servers. 
To be honest, it's downright creepy how well this works. xCloud is years ahead of Google Stadia and centuries ahead of how streaming feels on PS Now. Where the previous two still have noticeable examples of lag, xCloud syncs your controller inputs directly to the server, making the act of controlling something like a Halo deathmatch feel responsive and correct. Getting your library of Game Pass titles on the go is another area the likes of Sony and Nintendo simply aren't bothered about, at least yet. It's another string to Microsoft's bow that should serve them well if game streaming truly takes hold. Number 4. The Size Make no bones about it, the PS5 is a monster in terms of literal size. The sort of form factor that will no doubt be halved or even thirded once a few years have gone by, the PS5 currently measures 15.4 inches tall, 10.2 inches deep, and 4.1 inches wide. Contrastingly, Series X is a third shorter at just 11.8 inches tall and 5.9 inches wide and deep. Series S is smaller still, just 10.8 inches tall, 5.9 inches deep, and 2.5 inches wide. Even the original PS4 was just 10.8 inches tall on its side, making the PS5 the biggest home console in history. Maybe you have the space. Or maybe your entertainment center was already close to bursting with the last generation of systems. Either way, both new Xboxes are smaller and far more in keeping with the aesthetic of most people's home setups. Number 3. That insane IP and developer roster Back to games, and you can't talk about Microsoft's first party lineup without talking about the world-shaking acquisition of Bethesda from the close of September 2020. Coming out of nowhere, it bolstered Xbox's first-party dev studio count to a whopping 23 teams, seven more than Sony's current 16. Obviously, right now, we have no idea how the exclusivity side of things will play out, or how much Microsoft will restrict content from Fallout or Elder Scrolls to ensure that you stick with Team Xbox, but the deed is done. Microsoft threw $7.5 billion at Bethesda, and their team of studios is now ludicrously strong. The Elder Scrolls, Doom, The Evil Within, Fallout, Dishonored, Prey, Wolfenstein, all these IPs are now assigned to Xbox. On the dev side, we've got Bethesda's grouping of Arcane, Machine Games, id Software, and more. But Microsoft already owned 343 Industries, The Coalition, Mojang, Obsidian, Rare, and scores more. Microsoft and Xbox played one hell of a hand. It's a deal that, had they made it years ago and had a first-party lineup ready for launch, may have sewn up day one pre-orders there and then. As it stands, alongside Game Pass and xCloud, Microsoft are throwing so many irons in the fire, it'll be fascinating to see what comes in the next few years. Number 2. Affordability this is entirely for the Series S, as while the SX is matching the PS5 at direct price points, it's all to play for as Microsoft are offering a super cheap next-gen console for just £249 slash $299. For that, you still get all the bells and whistles of Microsoft's brand new Auto HDR, their upscaling tech for your library of games, and the knowledge that whatever comes across the entire next generation, it'll be supported on Series S. The knock-on effect is that the Series S is a less powerful machine than the Series X, but there's no getting around that price point. As Xbox's Phil Spencer thinks the Series S will outsell the SX over time, clearly he's confident that this ultra-cheap price point is a worthy investment for the next cycle. And number one, the world's most powerful console. Down to brass tacks. If we're talking what the systems are capable of, what any developer will be able to squeeze out of them across the entire next generation, the point for raw power goes to Microsoft. With various tech experts weighing in, the Xbox Series X is said to be 17% more powerful than PS5, in terms of raw computational power. This notion of better is offset by things like the PS5's ultra-quick custom SSD, which could let developers code titles to perform better on Sony hardware, but when it comes to comparing data points, Microsoft have the most powerful console in the world, no questions asked. In conclusion, it feels like both companies are competing in drastically different lanes to get to the same destination. I'll cover Sony's side of things in an additional video very, very soon. As with so many nuanced pros and cons, it's worth dissecting what works and what doesn't for your own wants and needs. With all that stuff in mind, I've been Scott from whatculture.com. Let me know which system you're going with down in the comments, and I'll catch you soon.